Canola School on realagriculture.com is supported by Bear Crop Science. Well, certainly when we have um, better than normal uh, moisture stored in the spring, that's and it's then assuming we're going to have normal uh, growing season precipitation. Usually, that's going to mean that we're going to have at least uh, normal and more than likely above normal uh, crop yields at the end of the year. The more moisture we have, usually the better the yields uh, uh, we're going to take off at the end of the season. So then we have to kind of think about okay, what is the yield potential? So if we look at canola, um, a lot of areas actually have uh, upwards of four inches of stored soil moisture already in their soil going into spring. And that's about what it takes canola from the, from the time it germinates to the time it starts to flower. That's about how much uh, moisture the canola con needs for vegetative growth. And then for every inch of moisture we get after that, we're going to get somewhere between three and four and a half bushels, depending on how, how uh, hot or how cool it is during the growing season. So then we can kind of start making some estimates in terms of yield potential. And then when we know our, our yield potential, then we can start to make some assumptions as to how much nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur that crop is going to need. So from a fertilizing standpoint, that gives us an indication of where we should be um, fertilizing. So in the areas that have uh, above normal uh, moisture right now going into spring, odds are they may want to be putting on more fertilizer because of higher yield potential. And then the other fact to consider is many of the areas actually produced fairly good yields last year that were fairly wet above normal precipitation. And so we actually drew down our, our nutrient reserve more so last year than we would in a normal year. And it actually stayed fairly wet through till harvest. So the nutrient levels tend to be drawn down more so so with those two combinations, lower than normal nutrients going into spring and higher than normal uh, moisture in the soil, a lot of farmers may have to consider actually putting on more fertilizer, particularly nitrogen. That would be the first one I'd be concerned about. And the other one I'm concerned about is, is sulfur. Sulfate sulfur is mobile. Uh, we often have, tend to have a lot of depth uh, in a lot of our soils across the prairies, but the surface soils may be deficient. And canola, of course, needs more sulfur than, than most of the crops. So. Um, uh, nitrogen will be the nutrient I'll be most concerned about putting on more and making sure we have adequate uh, sulfur and then making sure that uh, you look at the other nutrients. Particularly, the other nutrient I'd be concerned about to a certain extent would be phosphorus because again, if we are, things are kind of be shaping up to be wet and, uh, and cool and certainly crops and canola is uh, included in that. Uh, when soils are, are wetter and colder, phosphorus tends to be less available, roots are growing more slowly. So making sure we have uh, phosphate very close to the seed for plant uptake is important too. So that's, you know, I'd be looking at nitrogen, number one, sulfur, number two, and then being very careful with placement of, uh, of phosphorus for, for good uptake of phosphorus as well. Well, odds are the, the soil test, if you took, if a farmer took his soil test in um, very late October or, or um, uh, early November, like the, it really kind of did got, tended to get cold in that second week of uh, November and then things have been frozen solid since. And so really, as long as you took your soil test fairly close to freeze up, I wouldn't anticipate a lot of change. That would be sort of what I would anticipate. But you know, there are certainly a lot of areas. I know in the, on the Regina Plains, they had uh, easily three feet of snow uh, cover, and that came fairly quickly. And there are some areas that um, uh, don't really have that much frost in the ground. Typically, most of the people I've been talking about, they've got three to four feet of frost. But we have areas just south of Lethbridge that have no frost, the frost out of the ground completely that had really good snow cover. So um, as long as the ground was pretty much frozen all winter long, probably there wasn't a lot of change. But if you happen to be an area where, where things weren't, you might actually have had some microbial activity taking place and there might have been some, some changes going on over the winter time. But really the only way to know that for sure, uh, because there can be such wide variation from one area to another, is we did soil test again in the spring. Maybe not all of your fields, if you did do some testing last fall, Maybe just check some selected fields you're going to be putting canola in this year to see where they're at, just to, just for your own peace of mind to, to ensure that uh, things haven't changed significantly from fall to spring. Well, that's always a good question. Um, we actually just uh, recently did a, a seeding date and seeding rate study in southern Alberta on irrigated land, and we really found that uh, we would actually start seeding uh, as early as uh, April 12th, April 13th for this study. And then our, our, we usually tended to, to plan for our last seeding date. We'd have four different seeding dates. We'd plan for our last seeding date in the last few days of May. And it was one year in 2007, our last seeding date, just because of the, the way things worked out. It was uh, around June 7th, just, just the way the rains came. So we had quite a range of our seeding dates, but normally we tried to seed 
uh, around mid-April and every 10 to 12 days through uh, till the end of May to see what the impact actually was with canola. And overall, uh, if we seeded in, in the last two weeks of April, usually there wasn't much of an impact in terms of, of yield. There was the odd time, even if we had a bit of a frost, we were able to still kind of uh, beat that and, and we were kind of fortunate. But really after May 1st, we actually found in southern Alberta that our yield would decline with canola about 1.7% for every day we delayed seeding from May 1st to uh, the end of May. So if you had a 50 bushel yield potential uh, on May 1st and then you lost 1.7% of yield potential every day, that means at the end of May your yield potential will be 25 bushels theoretically. It's not, it doesn't always work out quite that, that simply, but that was the trend line with uh, the, the various sites we had over that four year period. But the reality is, as you start to delay seeding, uh, if you kind of stop and think, one of the most important factors in growing a crop is, is capturing that energy of the sun. And every day we delay seeding, well, that's fewer long days we actually have, because our longest day of the year is typically June 21st. So if we seed on May 1st, that means that we're going to have about uh, seven weeks where the days are getting longer before they start getting shorter. But if we seed on, on uh, May 30th, that means we've only got three weeks and the days start getting shorter again. So. Farmers are really in the business of capturing the energy of the sun, and so as we delay seeding, then that uh, reduces yield potential. And there's certainly have other factors in terms of, of effects of, um, of uh, heat that comes in July. The, the, um, the less advanced the crop is when we get heat, then that heat's going to impact uh, flowering and impact seed sets. So there's other factors in terms of heat and disease and insects that all come into play when those kind of move in. But the sooner you get the crop in the ground, the more advanced it is, and then if you do have hot conditions or disease or insects that move in, the more advanced the crop is, then the more it's going to be able to uh, kind of withstand those pressures. So um, in my mind, um, the earlier a farmer can get his crop in, the better, but also having to keep in mind, you know, what are the, the frost concerns as well. So certainly for most farmers, uh, I wouldn't recommend seeding before May 1st, no matter where you are in the prairies, uh, when you're seeding canola. but. Um, but in, on the southern prairies, probably as soon as you can, you know, kind of keeping an eye on what the frost risk is and then um, uh, just get the crop in as soon as you can, keeping, keeping that in, in mind. Um, but I probably would not seed canola in southern Alberta or on the southern prairies prior to May 1st, especially this year when it's been so cool. But then shortly after May 1st, I would probably be looking at, if that's as soon as I get on the, on the land, then I would probably seed uh, canola first, but also looking ahead and and see what the long-range forecast is for the next two weeks. Because usually canola is going to, even then, when soils are quite warm, it's going to take seven to ten days for that crop to be up. So you kind of want to look and be looking ahead and see what the frost risk is. But normally I wouldn't recommend seeding canola uh, before about uh, the very end of uh, April or beginning of May. Uh, for so the southern prairies and then uh, central prairies, and you have to kind of make that, that decision, kind of what's going to be best for you. But uh, certainly of all of the crops we grow, Canola does tend to use or lose the greatest yield potential of any of the crops like canola will be around 1.7% in southern Alberta.